One of the best ways to make a living along the frontier is to be a photographer. Sometimes it seems like almost everybody's getting his picture taken. One of the prices of success in business, I guess. Like Black Bart, for instance. He was a graduate road agent, a very respected citizen. And that is, he was respected by his brother road agents. He was sort of looked down on by his customers. Or the Dalton boys. I reckon one of the things that made America great was the eagerness of her professional men to find new ways of doing things. The Daltons figured anybody could hold up a stagecoach, but a train, that took a little know-how. Lots of folks think the James boys made the most outstanding contributions to the art of Robin Banks. Well, they were pretty good, I grant you, but they weren't the best, not by a long shot. I know, because I've met quite a few bank robbers, which is surprising, seeing as how I'm the very model of a peaceful, law-abiding man. My name's Destry. I keep on the move, looking for the fellow who framed me and sent me to prison. Now, I know everybody who was ever in prison claims he was framed, but I really was. The day I catch up with this fellow, I'll prove it. He's a hard man to find, but I'm kind of stubborn. I mean to keep right on looking, and someplace along the way, I figure to meet somebody who has a line on him. That somebody might even be a bank robber. If you think that Dalton's and Younger's and James's were the worst, you're mistaken. Because when I dropped into that little town of way back Colorado, I ran across the most treacherous, sneaky, untrustworthy, two-faced critter who ever bankrupted a municipality. Not that I'm an expert on such things or go around looking for new robbers. It's just that I happened to make a stop in way back I wasn't planning on. All right, cowboy. Hold it right there. Evening, Chef. Uh, do something for you? Seen you hanging around town. You here on business? Sort of. I'm looking for a fellow named Charlie Bent. Though we might be going into something else. About 30, heavy set, eyes kind of close together. If I see him, I'll tell him you couldn't wait any longer. I'm afraid I don't get you, Sheriff. Well, see if you can get this. Your name's Destry. You're a bum, a drifter, and a jailbird. Well, now, just a moment, Sheriff. You see... I know. You're framed. Which the truth, Sheriff? That's what they all say. But if there's to be a crime around here, I'll know who did it. See that building down at the end of Main Street? Yeah? That's the Spurline Depot down there. There's a train leaving in about 40 minutes. Goes up to Middleburg and Junction City. Well, now, just a minute, Sheriff. From Junction City, there's a mainline railroad goes both ways. You can go that away or that away, but don't come back this away. Sheriff, don't you think you're being just a mite harsh? Nope. Harsh is what I'm going to be if you're still around here 39 minutes from now. And if you've already pulled anything, don't think you can get away with it. There ain't but two, three places you can get to from here. I'll track you down and throw you back in prison. Don't bother yourself, Sheriff. <laughs> And so, my friends and fellow citizens, in observance of this memorable anniversary, I hereby declare today to be Law and Order Day in Wayback, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends. Of course, right here, there'll be a lot of hooting and hollering and carrying on and laughing and applause. 
What do I do to let dice down? Oh, just stand there. And six makes 33 and seven makes no, no. 40. No, no, no. I've got to do something. I Maybe take a sip of water. See, I don't want this to look too casual. Just ah, smile. Ah, that's it. Smile modestly during ovation. Where is it? There. Six makes 40 well, and eight. I'll take it home and work on it and leave this place in your very capable hands. I don't feel so capable right now. I'm going to figure it's off the nickel somewhere. Put down the plot. Well, it's yeah, always a little hard at first. You know, you've only been here a month. Yeah, make sure you close the vault. Oh, yes, thank you. Seven, seven, four, eight, fifty, six, and carry the eight. Get to that. Ah. Just think. Three hundred and sixty-five days without a crime. Three hundred and sixty-four. Well, don't work too hard, Mrs. Farrow. After all, a nickel isn't that important. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. you got a good half hour before that train leaves. Could I help you tote your things oh. over to the boarding house? Gracious sakes alive, Sheriff. I ain't helpless yet. Now oh, look, Leach. Us and Granny had the plans, the schedule, everything set up to the last detail. Look, the whole point was to crack it tomorrow night while the law people were still drunk from the holiday, right? Well, then, by the time they sobered up, why, we would have been all the way to the Utah Territory just splitting up that money three ways. Now, that's the whole point we hit tonight. And not tomorrow. We split up that money two ways. You know, I never thought of that. Looky there. You see what I see? Where's she going with them bags? More interested in what she's got in them. Why, that dirty double crosser. Hi, Granny. Thank you, boys. No tomorrow. Where are you going, Granny? Don't need to know. What you got in that bag, Granny? Hey, wait. 
wait a minute, Sam. You all right, ma'am? Oh, yes, thank you. How to clear rowdies and ruffians go through town like it was Halloween or something. Well, ma'am, now, you just hold this gun on these fellas, and I'll go fetch the... No, uh, you go fetch the sheriff, and I'll... Uh... Well, as a matter of fact, ma'am, I just remembered I have to be someplace right now. Well, you're a mighty nice young man, and you did plenty in Delphi's tears. Uh, you just run along, and I'll go catch my train from Middleburg. Train, ma'am? Yes. Well, that's where I'm going. Let me get your things. Oh, that's mighty nice of you. Your umbrella, ma'am? Somebody I used to know in Kansas. You don't say. Well, maybe you're thinking of my father. Uh, lots of people say I look like him. Used to be lawman, Nabble. Oh, no, no, no. I don't recall knowing any law people in Kansas. Uh, we'll be stopping in Middleburg for ten minutes to take on some freight. What's where you get off, isn't it, ma'am? Nope. The little lady's got to take Junction City. Oh, uh... Them things bothering you, I could uh, reverse the front seat, give you more room. Oh, no, thanks, son. Suits me fine, just as it is. Excuse me. You know, ma'am, I think I got you figured out. You're a fake. Fake? You just don't like to put people out. I can see that. But we're gonna make you comfortable whether you like it or not. Yeah. Do that. Now just move your stuff over here. You can get by the window. Oh. Lion's Ocean. Is that money? This is the only way she could have taken out of town. Well, you sure don't expect these horses to overtake no train now, do you? Oh, to overtake no train? There's only one train in the Junction City. Not another one out till next morning at 11 o'clock. Must be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in that poke. I didn't rightly take a good look at it. You suppose it's just play money? No, ma'am. Neither did those two fellas back there. Hmm. Well, I, I must have set my net and done somewhere and picked up somebody else's. Well, there's another thing could have happened. Somebody could have put their money in their bag without noticing they was putting it in mine. Sure they did. Well... I'm not going to let it spoil the whole trip. Middleburg, next stop. Middleburg, Colorado. Whittemore and I seem to have Ms. a little Miss Who, Who's Miss Whittemore? Well, lady, I'm riding with you know. <laughs> her name ain't Whittemore. That's Miss Farrell. She's a teller at the Wayback Bank. Excuse me.
If there's a crime committed around here, I'll know who did it. Sheriff, what would you say if I told you the bank was robbed by that sweet little old Mrs. Farrell? You're not only a jailbird, but a liar and a cat. That's what I thought you'd say, Sheriff. Sheriff, where? Oh, just thinking out loud, ma'am. Pedestri, it occurs to me you're taking this whole thing a good deal too serious. It is serious. Believe me. Well, what I mean is, uh, why can't we just finish our tea and then just act as if we never even bumped into each other at all? Except then I'd, I'd give you a thousand dollars. All right, then, two thousand. No. The money has to go back. Why, surely that's a sensible thing. Get it back before it's missed and nobody will be any the wiser. It also happens to be the honest thing. Well, son, you just run along and I'll take it back first thing in the morning. No need for you to worry yourself a particle more. Well, if it's all the same to you, Miss Wh Miss Farrell, I'll just go along with you. Yeah, we can stay here at the hotel overnight, take the train back in the morning. Well, all right then, but mind you, separate rooms. Well, you just take this room, ma'am, and I'll take the one at the end of the hall. Well, look, there's a strong lock on the door, me having all this money. Well, now, don't you worry about that. We're not going to expose you to any burglars. No, oh, ma'am. This money would be a lot safer with me. So will you. Night, ma'am. Good night, dearie. <laughs> Nothing better to do to wake up people in the middle of the night. Past 10 o'clock. Well, we wouldn't have bothered you for anything in the world, but we can't find our cousin Alfred. Yeah, he's a Episcopalian clergy. He wears one of them uh, gray suits and, and a turnaround collar. Oh, he was supposed to come up from way back on your train. We ain't seen him yet. Well, the only passengers I had were two drunken engines in the rear coach and uh, a little old lady in a cowboy in the front coach. A little old lady? Did she uh, say where she was going? Yeah. Well, they didn't go there. Uh, they both got off in Middleburg. You know you can't trust her out of your sight, so you'll have to go right to the bank with her in the morning and make sure she slips it back in the bank. Oh, no. You can't go in the way back in daylight. Don't you remember what the sheriff said? I'll catch you and throw you back in prison. You have to get that money back tonight, yourself. I'm tired. Tonight. I could uh, borrow a horse, get the way back and back. Well, you could rent one. Good. Except we're all out of rental horses. Well, how about selling me a horse? We're all out of selling horses, too. Remount officer from the U.S. Cavalry came by yesterday and bought my entire stock. Is this the only livery in town? Yep. asking myself how I got in a mess like this. I had $20,000 of the hottest money this side of the United States Mint. On top of that, I had the luck to find the only town in the West with only one livery stable, and that one with hay enough to feed a cavalry regiment and not enough horse to mount a midget on.
you had ten dollars that, you know, you wanted to deposit the bank and couldn't wait till the bank opened up. Something like that. Well, if I had ten dollars, I could find better things to do for it than put it in the bank. Well, isn't there some kind of a night depository or something like that where you could leave the money with a note? You mean like a mail slot in the door or something like that? Yeah. What did I know of? There must be some way. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Mr. Grubbs. That money's too painful in your pocket, mister. You might speak to the gent that just left. That's Grubbs, the banker. Thanks. Well, I saw this trash can just full of trash right near the bank. And there was an envelope, big brown envelope sticking out of it. And what looked like money sticking out of the envelope. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. And, and well, I opened the envelope, and sure enough, it was money all right. $20,000 of it. That much, huh? Anyway, I figured somebody at the bank must have thrown out the wrong envelope by mistake. Uh, good thing I came along when I did. I put the money in a carpet bag. Uh, there was tobacco juice all over the envelope. And you're prepared to go and fetch it forever. You've got it hid, is that right? Yes, sir. Well, don't bother. Whoever it was probably meant to throw the money in the trash. You see, it was uh, worn out, dirty. <laughs> good night. Mr. Grubbs, listen to me. Why is it you con men and swindlers always pick on a small town banker? You come around with some flim-flam story about finding a $2,000 diamond bracelet or a wallet filled with money and you want to share it with someone. Now, I was listening to that kind of come on before you were born. Mr. Grubbs, we're talking about $20,000 of your money. Well, if you're so worried about it, why don't you tell the sheriff? Maybe he'll go partners with you. I'll tell you one thing. If you're still hanging around town when the sun comes up, I'll speak to the sheriff myself. Look here, boy. Go straight. Flim Flamin takes two things that you haven't got. A keen mind and an honest face. Sheriff? Before you get into that, you sound like a description of a troublemaker who was told to get on the 512 train. Sheriff said his name was Destry. Well, I'm, uh, I'm off mistook for him. Well, if you mistook for him again, say, in uh, five minutes when the sheriff gets back, you're liable to end up with the wrong name on your tombstone. I see. Well, now, about this other thing, I wonder if I could just leave. You'd better leave, cowboy. We don't want no dark clouds hanging over law and order today. Way back yesterday, then I, 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 well, I, I forgot when I was on my way to town. Come on, Granny, what was the stuff for us? That stuff was that I was able to clean out that hick bank without you boys having to bust in and blast it. Let's just ask the old witch just one more time where that money's at. The money, oh, the money, safe. All we got to do is take it away from that dumb cowboy.
Carol, in case you are up before I get back, don't worry. I'll get that money back into the bank even if I have to drop it down the stovepipe. Your friend, Destry. Oh. <laughs> to get the money back into the bank without being seen. The trouble was, all the doors and windows opened right on the main street, and even at night I'd probably be seen. Besides, breaking a window or a door in a bank is illegal. If there's anything I hate, it's something illegal. That didn't leave me much choice. <laughs> shouldn't be out running around this time of night. Oh, don't you give it a thought, son. I declare to my soul, it's enough to restore a body's whole faith in human nature, knowing there's still folks like you in the world to depend on, or to make you boys what? feel kind of sheepish. Kind of does, Granny. All right, cowboy. Out of your hole. Oh, here's my satchel all safe and sound. You're a sweet boy to take good care of it. Uh, uh, where did you put the money, son? Put it back in the vault and slam the door shut. Oh, dearie me, that means I gotta go get it out. Well, you keep your guns on Mr. Destry here, and I'll just pop through this rabbit hole of his. Don't take a minute. This doesn't look quite safe to me, Granny. I think you better let Badger here get our money out. Nope. You boys bust in the safe, it'll take you most of the night. <laughs> such a sweet little old lady. Oh, she is. Ain't nobody sweeter than Granny Dalton. Especially when it comes to robbing the bank. She does the sweetest job of anybody in the business. She's the greatest. <laughs> Makes you wonder what the world's coming to. Shouldn't she ought to be coming back by now? Oh, yeah. Badger. 
It's gone! She did it again! Told you I should have hit her in the mouth. You know the trouble with you fellas? You're too trusting. And maybe you got something there. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if you and her wasn't in cahoots. Oh, shut up, will you, Baxter? Well, what now? Well, he's thinking. Every time something like this happens, I get so mad, I just want to hit somebody. I'd hit the cowboy. Hey, wait. <laughs> Just let me explain. Not in a thousand years. I saw the man only last night. He stopped and talked to me on the street. I thought he was a common, ordinary, everyday confidence man. Just let me tell you how it happened. Is this a different way it happened? Or the last two ways it happened? You mean the two strangers or the trash can in the alley? You know what I think? This man is an eccentric. It'd help their feelings a lot, stranger, if you'd tell them where you hid the money. I told them. If you just stop stopping around and go after them three, uh, two bank robbers. Don't you tell me how to do my job. Well? We went through that dug up dirt with a grub hole. And there ain't no money there. I could have told you that. That money's halfway to Junction City by now. Sure, and a big brown envelope with tobacco juice all over it. Anyway, thanks for trying. I better be getting home. Got to get all spruced up for law and order day. Well, you better do something pretty quick or I'm going to have to change my speech. Well, all them speeches being made today and all them people listening and laughing up their sleeve. I'm kind of glad I ain't one of the principal speakers. It'd help you if you wasn't speaking at all. getting mighty tired of this. We've been to 20 boarding houses already. Right, she's probably, she's probably skipped already anyway. Oh, shut up, will you, Badger? Well, good morning, ma'am. I and my brother Winthrop, we're looking for a kinfolk of ours, supposed to live here. She goes by the name of Miss Farrell. Is she to home? Well, I believe so. At least she was in for breakfast. Kinfolk. Well, I never. Well, we're her nephews from Tombstone, Arizona. Oh, I know she'll be tickled to see you. I'll just run up and tell her you're here. Oh, uh, do you mind? We haven't seen her in such a long time. We can't let them together. Surprise her? Why, go right ahead. It's upstairs. And second door to your right. Thank you. I don't mind saying, Granny, you've been a real disappointment to I and Badger both. Now, there's no hard feelings, but we'd rather not do business with you anymore. Oh, you got to, boys. You can't even get past the city limits without old Granny to help you. Or the road north of here is full of lawmen coming to the celebration. Well, we don't have to go that way. We're sneaking south through Scavenger Gulch. Oh, can't you ever keep your mouth shut? Oh, south of here's full of Indians. They'll kill you. After being a partner of yours, Miss Dalton, we ain't gonna be phased by a few hundred hostile Indians. Goodbye. I was brooding over uh, what you said about folks laughing up their sleeve at the Law and Order celebration. Oh, I didn't mean nothing personal. I was trying to figure out a way to still make the holiday mean something. I think Mr. Destry here has given me the answer. Glad to hear that, Sheriff. Good night. Well, we still haven't got the bank money back. We got the next best thing. 
which is you. Uh, I don't believe I follow you, Sheriff. There's a judge coming over with the Middleburg delegation. People still love to see trials. You got the making of a mighty fine trial, Destry. Let's see. Got you down here for breaking and entering, grand and petty larceny, illegal possession of a burglar tools, meaning the shovel and the pickaxe, vandalism and malicious mischief, and naturally, the vagrancy charges we had in the first place. Uh, what with all them other charges, I don't think we can get him on vagrancy. All right, we'll drop that one. I'm not vindictive. You're mighty conscientious. We're going to have the rip roaringest law and order day this community ever saw. Get the trial and hanging done early. Start the main entertainment at 5 p.m. like we planned. Sounds good to me. How's that strike you? I believe I'd like to think about it for a day or two. Why don't you move Mr. Destry into one of them back cells? Uh, a little more private back there. Don't bother yourself, Sheriff. As cells go, this one here is just fine. When I say private, I mean you might want to wash up and brush off a little. You don't want to go to no hanging looking like that. I'm going out and see about getting the gallows built. Just using our horse and tree always seemed kind of small towny to me. I suppose I could have told the sheriff that Granny Farrell robbed the bank. Trouble was, I knew that if I accused that sweet little old lady of robbing a bank, the sheriff wouldn't wait until the scaffold was built. He'd hang me on the bars of my cell. Finest sheriff we ever had. Always thinking. You hear about the big excitement? Over to the bank? My land, yes, wasn't it just terrible? Truth to tell, that's why I'm here. I, I was sitting over at the boarding house this morning, just, just thinking about that poor young bank robber and how he must feel. Well, he, he probably feels real serious. They're thinking of trying and hanging him this afternoon. Probably ain't got a friend in this whole world. Well, I... Uh, I thought I'd fix up this basket of fruit and stuff, maybe cheer him up a little. Folks gonna get hung this afternoon, they, they always want somebody to talk to. Miss Farrell, you're a pure saint. Oh. I'll, I'll just see if he's decent. Thank you. They did, huh? Every last cent of it. They just take it and left, the crooks. Hmm. Takes one to know one, I figure. Oh, don't go comparing me to Leach and Badger. I'm smart. They got the money. Won't do them no good. They're going to get themselves killed. How do you figure? I begged and I pleaded with them, but they're still heading south from here on the getaway. Down Scavenger Gulch, through the hostile country. Son, nobody's ever got past them Indians down there. Now, if you was to head them boys off... Head them off? Ma'am, you caught me on kind of a bad day. Why don't you tell the sheriff? Maybe he'll head them off. You don't rightly understand the kind of a man Mr. Lawson is. Oh, he's a decent sort of sheriff's go, but he's, well, he's, he's stingy. Why, well, he wouldn't even split the reward with me. You're still thinking about money, aren't you? Oh, well, now, now look at it this way, boy. If you was to do what I'm asking you, you'd be doing a good turn for everybody. Well, if I was to get you out of here, you could rescue them poor bandits, and when you brought them in, there'd be that nice reward money for just you and me. Why, you'd feel real good and real prosperous all at the same time. And there's another way of looking at it. Well, it's a little selfish, maybe, but just think, if you was to catch them two young men, why, you wouldn't get hung. You wouldn't want to get hung, would you? Not if I were to have my choice, no. You kind of hinted that you might be able to get me out of here. How? When I was fixing 
fixing these goodies for you, I put in a nice big slab of homemade cornbread, and inside the cornbread is a nice double-cut steel fire. Wow, well, it'll go through those rickety old bars just like they was fresh butter. Sure. Waking up that deputy in half the town. Well, if you're gonna be picky about it, there's a dozen ways of busting out of these here tank town jails. I can modify the lock on the door of the cell here, so it's when I leave and he slams it shut, it won't really lock at all. You know, these bars are kind of rickety. Let me have a couple of those apples over there. Here, girl. Good girl. Come here. Get the nice apple, girl. Come here, girl. Add a girl. Come right over here to Papa. You all right, Miss Farrell? Oh, yes, indeed. I'm just fine, thank you. I don't care how bad you've been or how wicked a life you've led. There's still a chance if you'll just reach out and take it. Son, that's all that counts. When you walk over to that hanging this afternoon, people can see you're a good man. And that'll make you feel better and them too. Nice girl, nice girl. Come here. Stay right there, girl. Here, girl, come here. Give you another nice apple. the nice apple girl look at this all right now go fetch <laughs> Well, just suppose I do see, see some Indians. Well, what am I going to do? Run. Huh, a lot of good death, do. Why, Indians are just a natural-born catastrophe. Well, I got news for you. You're just a natural-born catastrophe. What do you mean by that? Run. Run for your lives. Indians. Hey, what's that? It's Indians. Over the hill, they'll lock 50 of them. Yes, sir. Come on. How about give me a gun? Give me a fighting chance to die like a man. All right, boys. Drop those rifles. Up with the hands. You know, I got a feeling there ain't no Indians. Sir, I ain't sending out no posse nowhere. There's no point in me apprehending criminals and such. 
when all they do is kick out the side of the building and go traipsing off. I'll be reasonable, Larson. It's the first time it ever happened. How would you like it if folks went around kicking holes in your wall? Sheriff! Sheriff! He's coming back. Who's coming back? That destry fella. He's got my horse. All right, hold up there. Well, I brought back your bank robber, Sheriff. They did, they did. Also brought back your money. Well, that does make a difference. Here you are. Oh, and thanks for the loan of the horse. Good horse. Without the chairman. Miss Farrell, you could do me a mighty big favor. Anything at all. This here is the money that was stolen. Take this in and put it in the vault. It's already open. Stack it away the way it's supposed to be. And then lock up everything when you leave. I've got to get to the sheriff and get to the platform. Mr. Robbins, don't you worry about a thing. Thank you, ma'am. No. It's not for just my sake I'm asking. It's for law and order. None today, Sheriff. Your daddy was a lawman, and now you're a hero, too. If you was just to talk to the citizens, they'd give me a new building, some deputies. I wouldn't give you air if you was in a jug. Grubs, you talk to them. I hate heroes, and I hate speeches, and I hate ceremonies. Now, Mr. 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 Larson, in view of Mr. Destry's present mood, I think it would be better not to urge him to make a speech. Young man, thank you for everything. You be sure and come back and see us. Well, thank you. I've been trying to get out of this godforsaken town for the last 24 hours. I'm further back now than when I started. I haven't even got the 50 cents train fare anymore. Oh, now, Mr. Destry, well, why, if that's your only problem, you've been a real benefactor to the Wayback National Bank, and the bank would like to be the same for you. Well, now, Mr. Grubbs, on behalf of myself, I'd like to thank yourself and all the nice people at the bank. Keep smiling, Sheriff. You just asked me to do something for you sometime, Destry.